Hello, and welcome back to The Roulette. I'm your host, Michael Riley. Jason Amherst is with me. N64 games, let's spin it. We still have three vetoes. NFL quarterback club. I smell one about to be used. Nope, quarterback club. Yeah, no, nah, this is definitely a veto. Yeah, I, I figured as much. All right, so that's uh, we're down to two vetoes. Spin it again. <laughs> Virtual pool 64. I don't know, man. Let's just go with it. All right. We're going to play some virtual pool. All right. Sweet. Virtual pool. Virtual pool. <laughs> Screw it. Let's see. Let's see what virtual pool is. It's well, I, pool I was gonna virtually. Say, I was going to say. Well, there's a lot of. That was a good a lot of different. A uh, lot of different ways you could play it, actually. Like yeah. Rule sets. Ball sets. Can I? Oh, okay. Susie poor bet. <laughs> push over. Oh, push over yeah. for sure. So we got oh, cool. Susie can, poor bet. Can... Rocky cue balls. Just in time. Constant scratcher. <laughs> Mrs. Often. <laughs> <laughs> Bad Luck Rogers, Ludwin von Beethoven, Chocolate Moose, that's funny, <laughs> Thieving Grieving, Della Gates, John Luke Hit Hard, <laughs> Hank Rupsey, Cash Sports and Wager, <laughs> <laughs> Reedy Wonder Blunder, Crocodile Crumbly, Dick T. Stan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dick, Dick T Steak wins. I'm that's, sorry. That's that's my porn name. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I mean, this this is already worth it based on those names. You kidding me? G game game of the show right here. That was a good break. Yeah, decent break. I don't think I sunk one. Yeah, so Dick uh, T Stick is going to take a shot. I guess he's solids. Miss. Nice miss, Jackass. Nice miss. This is just making me kind of wish I was just playing pool, which I do yeah. actually a lot. I, I, enjoy, I enjoy billiards. I do play a lot of pool when I'm out uh, at karaoke. I play a lot of pool, so I'm I'm decent at it. I don't, I'm not gonna say I'm like the greatest. I'm okay. I have my moments. Um. How do I move the... Uh, I want to move it's the... It's aiming specifically for the one ball. Is it? Yeah. That doesn't... So I can't choose? That, that sucks. Oh, what? Did I take huh? too much time and it took it away from me? I don't know. That fucking sucks. Yeah, I have no clue. I think it's aiming for the 11 ball. Yeah, I must have to get him in order. Okay, yeah. It's all right. Totally did not hit that. See, when I, I don't... Illegal shot, own ball, not hit. So he's got ball in hand. Oh, nice. 
Sink that nine ball. Boom. And I scratched. <laughs> oh. Motherfucker. Dang. So he gets a free place in the kitchen. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this one's probably my best shot. Uh, that should do it. Nope. Oh, it must have hit the eight ball first. Yeah, it must have hit the eight first. Yeah. Eh. Damn it. Oh, balls. <laughs> this is definitely not how I play pool. <laughs> yeah. And most people I know, it's not how they play pool either. But it's fine. There's variations. Um, I think that's... I mean, there's eight ball. There's nine ball. There's no balls. Like balls that aren't numbered. I've I've seen that once. I think I got one of his in on accident. Uh, yeah, I probably have a better shot with one of these. Let's go fourteen into the side. If I can get the angle on it right. Not quite. Not quite that. I have the same problem playing when I play pool in real life that I'm having with this game. Is that my bad lack of angles? Well, yeah, but it's it's like bad angles can you can work around bad angles. It's just that I have a lack of depth perception, and that really kind of hampers me a little bit in terms of figuring out doing geometry on the fly and things like that. It's just it sucks, but you know it is we it is what it is. Oh wow, I completely whiffed. See, that's part of my problem, having bad depth perception. And that's a mm. scratch, since I didn't hit my ball first. Oh, no, he's just going to play it. All right. Cool. He just banked something in. I don't know what what, what he pay, what he put in. Three ball. Must have. Almost got one of your balls in. Yeah. Illegal shot. <laughs> Illegal shot. I don't really have a good shot. I mean, at least you can hit one of your balls. It's true. Oh, come on! He's going to have a hell of a time with that. Yeah. Nope, no he's not. He's just going to sink two of them at once. All what right. the hell? I thought he was a pushover. Dick T. Should have gone with... Should have gone with one of the uh, lower ranked pushovers. Yeah, I should have faced off against Susie Porbet. That's my fault. I'll remember that for next time. In the meantime, that's a dicey opportunity. Uh, ooh, let's try. Let's try that. Ah, uh, the angle's just slightly off. Oh, and uh, I got one of my balls knocked the cue ball into a pocket, so it's a scratch. Dang it. Well, he set me up here if I can hit it. That's my only issue. Nice. Oh god damn it! I scratched. Ugh. I had I got knocked it in and I scratched. Oh man, he's planted that one ball right in the way of all my shooting opportunities. God damn it! I won't be able to hit that without knocking the one in. Go for the eleven, <sighs> maybe. Might as well. Did that fucking go in? That fucking went in. Wow. I'm shocked. That's that's still not going to work out for me. Uh, let's try the 14. Oh! oh! Ouch. I hate that. When that happens in real life, too, I hate it. It's like... 
Yeah. God damn it, just go in the pocket. All I ask. Now you've cornered yourself. Computer called. What does that mean? Oh, he's calling he me. He's calling for the ball. corner pocket. Yeah. Illegal. Whiff. He illegally. Uh. Why can I not? That sucks. I guess I can't. Oh, maybe because it was an illegal shot. I don't know what that has to do with me, but all right. Yeah, I guess you just got to play it from where it lies there. That sucks. As opposed to a uh, scratch. But still not bad. I lined him up perfectly on that one. Yeah, I think I'm going to lose this one. Wow, he missed it. With uh, Dick T Stick, uh, you know, can't uh, win when the chips are down. Oh, he does not. Uh, have, uh, yeah, he doesn't have a very. Shot. Yeah, he doesn't have a good shot. He could still hit it in. That would have been the corner I would have called. Oh, he's not going to hit at that angle. Oh. I was barely. Oh, you can fine tune it. I didn't know you could do that. Huh. Uh, let's go like that. Uh, whoops. <laughs> I thought I had a better angle on it than that. That's all right. Yeah, he's going to try to yeah, go for that hole again. For that corner, yeah. Wow. Well, he's having a tough time with that, that pocket. Maybe he should try a different pocket. Yeah. Okay. Don't scratch. Don't scratch! <sighs> All right, actually... How did none Damn. of those go in? Okay, so that's come probably going to be... Come on, come on, It's probably going to be a corner shot again, I would imagine. Yeah. Yeah. He's been having issues that with that pocket. Him all oh, the, yeah. All the problems. Yeah. Oh, wow, he fucked that up terribly. Yeah. Okay, so I think... Do I have a good shot on that 15 or 12, I should say? Looks like maybe. Looks like you get a good shot there on it. We'll see. Okay. Nice. All right. All right. Now we're cooking. We're cooking with gas. Oh, you're cooking with gas. Like right there, I think. Nope. That was not the angle I wanted. Not only did I scratch, but I sank the eight ball. So that was the first game. Apparently, I think it's the first of five, or first for a, five. a best of five, brother. Yeah. Oh, it's me, huh? Oh, well, I'm gonna take the the low hanging fruit here. Maybe. No, of course not. I mean, like I said, it's the same problem I have in real life pool. I'm bad with angles with my depth perception being bad. I really need my glasses again. I need to save up for a pair of glasses. I guess he's solids again, which is good because yeah. I got a really easy shot right here. Perfect shot here. Boom. Yep. I wonder if that left me anything, though. Yeah, uh, I might be able to kinda, maybe. maybe on the 14 here. Possible. Ooh. 
Oh, that was probably about as good as I could have done it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna come down on myself too hard for that one. It was a decent shot, it just didn't have the angle I wanted. He's he set me up for that for that ten now. God damn it! Ah, uh, he doesn't really have any good shots though. Yeah, no, he doesn't. As he sinks one. <laughs> wow. That was actually pretty impressive. That he was able to thread yeah. the needle there between those other two. Wow. And then he quote and then he totally just uh, says fuck it and just bounces those across the table. I don't really have a good shot either. What I guess I could try to do is bank the eleven into the twelve and try to see if I can put the twelve in into the corner. It's gonna be tricky. But it can be done. But not like that, it ain't. I think I scratched. Scratched. Yep. And he's going to go ahead and pocket that one since I set him up. I tend to set people up way less when I'm playing in real life. I kind of strategically <laughs> think if I know if I'm I know if I'm going to miss, or at least there's a decent shot of missing. I'll try to put that ball behind some other ones so that they can't really have a shot. So uh, see for me, like I I play uh, I play war. You know, if I have no good shot, but I can knock somebody else's far away from there being a decent shot, I will freaking mess with people. I I play like a troll. <laughs> Uh, you know how to play billiards. <laughs> Bill billiards is a complex sport. Yes, I called it a sport. It's like an onion. There's many layers to it. Listen, I didn't come here to be lectured by Shrek about pool. <laughs> uh, anyway, thoughts on virtual pool 64, Jace? You know, I mean, surprisingly complex, you know, uh, and, and very chill soundtrack. This is, yeah, I, I would, uh, I, I could, I could vibe to this. Yeah, this is, um, I, I think as, as far as pool games go, most of them can be kind of hit or miss. I think this is probably about as good as you can possibly get in terms of a pool game. Um, especially on the N64, uh, I think, honestly, I would have preferred a 3D lunar pool because that would have been a hell of a lot of fun. Oh, but God, I would love for I would love to come a 3D up with lunar like pool. That. If somebody could like just make a homebrew ROM of that for the N64, I'll play the shit out of it because that would be actually a lot of fun to play. That being said, oh, that was a bad angle. That being said, is that going to go in the side? I thought it was going to go in the side. That would have been hilarious. Uh, that being said, this is actually a perfectly competent pool game, and I think, uh, as as people, as Jason and I are, are players of billiards, like I'd say it's pretty good. Scores out of ten, Jason. Seven. Yeah, that's that's what I was thinking too. Is a seven. Uh, it's about as much fun as you're going to get with pool on the N64. I think so. Uh, in so, fairness, though, like N64 is a really good uh, uh, platform for a game of this type. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's gonna be real hard to fuck up a pool game. It can be done. I, I still think one of the best pool games ever is uh, the pool mode in Super Monkey Ball. I'm actually kind of glad we didn't veto that one. <laughs> that was actually that was actually not as bad as I, I had a feeling talking. that it would be a decent vibe, a decent game. You know, spin it again. Okay, if you actually Enjoy owned it. here. Seeds of evil. On the uh, on the wheel. Uh, no, I got the remake though. I also played a little bit of the remake, uh, not on stream. I didn't really care too much for the second or third Turok games. I never played the third one. I didn't even know there was a third one until much later on, because that's yeah. near the end of the N64's life. But I I was just never big into Turok 2. I like the first one. I think it's great. I might change my mind about this one, playing it a little bit here. 
like I said, I, I I was never that into it. The multiplayer is fun. The multiplayer is fucking a lot of fun, and that's something yeah. the first Turok did not have. Yeah, so, yeah, definitely the multiplayer is way way fun. Of course, I got some accoutrements already. But yeah, the yeah multiplayer and this this is one of the games that had really good multiplayer. Now it's no Goldeneye, I will give you that. And then think really honestly, the, the the multiplayer was like added into this game because of Goldeneye. I think they were trying to capitalize on that. But yeah. that being said, it was still it's still not bad. I mean, it's it's fun. Those are the roundest N sixty four titties I've ever seen. <laughs> Usually they are a lot pointier, but they really put a lot of polygons into it. Yeah, they uh, they have a breast expert to come in and sculpt the breasts. Am I supposed to sculpt the breasts? I don't know. Voiceover too. Yes. I do not remember shit about the Torok storyline. Yeah, it's like he was a regular guy that was pulled into another dimension and became the dinosaur hunter or something like that. Some bullshit. Well, wasn't he like Native American or something? I like mean, that? the Game Boy games actually explore this concept a little bit further. Yeah, he was a. The crazy American, thing yeah. is, is, like they're based off of like a comic book series. On that top and, of it and you know what's really fucked up? I love Turok Two on the Game Boy. That's one of my <laughs> favorite fucking games. Turok Two on Game Boy is the shit. Turok One's not bad either. The Game Boy game. Both of them are side scrollers, but Turok Two is really fucking yeah, I good. Yeah, I never, uh, I never played any of the old ones. I love Turok Two. It's a Game Boy Color game, but I love like, uh, Turok Game Boy 2. ones. Yeah, Turok Two is actually really good. I really enjoy it. The it's the soundtrack is amazing. The gameplay is fucking amazing. The control is great. It's one of the best platforming games I've ever played on the Game Boy. That's and it's really just a I mean, shame. There are a lot of them. Yeah, there are. And it's a really a shame that, like, I didn't get into the N64 version of Turok 2 as much as I did the Game Boy version. Yeah, because I absolutely love, as I say, I love the Game Boy version. The Game Boy version is great. And it's not even, it's, it's very dissimilar to this Turok 2. Like, it's not, it's very different. In, in, in Turok 2 and the Game Boy Color, I believe you start as a regular, the regular human being in New York City. Which you don't in this. You're always Turok in this, but... Thank God I was playing South Park earlier, because I would have not so, been used to uh, these controls. You're already in the, uh... I'm already familiar with the controls. Yeah. So we start we start the game off with explosions. Yeah. Muckle Bay Explosion! And to think, like, this came about because Acclaim bought a comic book company and was just like, hey, we can make comic <laughs> books of our properties while also making games out of the comic books. I mean, it worked out for him. I think Turok was one of the best franchises Acclaim ever did. True. So I feel like that worked out for him real well in the long run. There's probably some shit in the water that I got to do, too. No, I mean, uh, dinosaurs are still popular. They could, in theory, uh, you know, either one bring the franchise the back or, or, <laughs> said, or two. Said dinosaurs they, they are popular. They, they could uh, bring the franchise back for, like, you know, a cinematic experience. Could, yeah. Didn't they, um, wasn't there a 360 Turok game? Pretty sure there was. I'm pretty sure I owned it. Um, I'm pretty sure there was one around the beginning of the 360s. Uh, so you had Rage Wars on N64, and then the, oh yes, that, and I also I also played the shit out of Rage Wars, and but, then Shadow of Oblivion. But I was which... one of the unfortunate people to have the uh, the the black copy of Turok Rage Wars, the one that was messed up. Oh yeah, that had the yeah. bug that you couldn't complete the game. So I, that that I was not happy about, but uh, I did go back later and play it without the bug, and I love Rage Wars. Rage Wars is really fun. Yeah, so there was Rage Wars, uh, which shared very little. Like I guess it's a non-canon game. No, yeah, no, it's not canon. It's 
And then Shadow of Oblivion. It's about as canon as Turok on... 3 is, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, uh, which also hit the N64. Yes. So the whole trilogy was on the N64 yes. plus Rage Wars. Yes. And so... then Turok Evolution, which is a prequel to the first That's game. on GameCube. And uh, GameCube from what and I understand, yeah. that one's less well fondly remembered it's not like it's a bad game per se it's it's one of them it's one of them if it hadn't been for the actual franchise attached to it it probably would have been well better remembered yeah and like then, but uh, it's like for a Turok game it wasn't that good apparently a uh project was not picked up for Turok evolution uh getting a sequel right and then it, um, there was a few years, and I think it was like 2006 or seven that the 360 game came out. So I think I played the 360 uh, 2008, game. 360 and PlayStation okay, 3, yep. Propaganda Games, published by Touchstone Games, distributed by Disney Interactive Studios. Yep, Disney had the rights at one point. Yeah, um, Disney owns everything in the end. was planned and canceled mid-development due to layoffs at Propaganda Games. Um, oh, I bet I'm supposed to collect whatever that is up there. Oh, shit. I was in the box for a second. I was a dick in the box. Oh, my God. There was a freaking Java Turok game. Yeah, there was that. The Turok franchise was big. The fact that the, the franchise had four games on the N64. 2008, it was released on J2ME. Um... Yeah, the last, the most recent release being in 2015, and that is, of course, uh, the remaster of the original game. Right. Oh, okay. As I say, do I not have any other weapons? Because uh, I need most to blow this game barrel being up. Turok Three: Shadow of Oblivion remastered by Night Dive. Oh yeah, Turok I forgot they were from Lost Valley. What the hell? What is that? Is that a mobile game? Turok? No. Um, this was released on Windows uh, by Universal Studios Interactive and Pillow Pig Games. Interesting. It was a strategy game in the vein okay. of... Okay. In the vein of freaking, uh, like, Final There's Fantasy, I guess? I like, Final Fantasy Tactics? Interesting. No, no, I, it's an action game. Oh, it's an action but with game. with an isometric gameplay and kind of cutesy art. I was actually going to say, like, if it was like Final Fantasy Tactics, I recall we played that on SNES, on the uh, SNES Roulette, and I actually... Uh, I Ogre kinda, Battle. You played Ogre Battle. I thought we played Final Fantasy Tactics. Final Fantasy Tactics was a PlayStation 1 game. We might have played it on PS1 Roulette then. I'm pretty sure we played it. <laughs> At some point. And uh, I remember actually kind of enjoying it. Final because Fantasy it was different Tactics. from Final Fantasy. Shit, this didn't come out until like... Oh, okay, maybe this is because this is the greatest hits release. Um, but uh, my copy says 2001 copyright square for Final Fantasy Tactics. Uh -huh. So if I had to guess, I'd say you played Ogre Battle. Because uh, Ogre Battle plays very much like Final Fantasy Tactics. I could have swore we isometric. played Final, Final Fantasy Tactics at some point. But like, yeah, if I uh, if I just share this here, like uh, you can look at it later. the The artwork for Turok: Escape from Lost Valley makes you go, "This is a Turok game." Okay, I gotta actually. I'm gonna look at this right now. Wow, that is very chibi. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, like, that is I, definitely I looked at this weird. And was like, weird. What? Yeah, no, no, this, that's this weird. This was a PC game, apparently. I'll put that up on the screen for people at home. That, yeah, that is fucking, yeah, that is weird. Like now, now I'm just wondering that because apparently it was released on Windows and Xbox One. So, is it still purchasable somewhere? I wonder. Like, um. Let me see here. Turok Escape. Oh, Jesus. Lost Valley. I'm yeah. pretty sure that if they lost the uh, 
license that it's not available? Visit the store page. It's no longer available on Steam. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming Universal lost the license. So... But that being said, finding it, like, bootleggable online, there's nothing wrong with doing that if, if the license is no longer valid. <laughs> right. If you can't get it anymore, it's okay to pirate. I'm going to back my ass up so I can bow this. Hell, I'm curious about the freaking Java game, too, because, like, looking at that, I'm just like, that's... Certainly something. It's got Duke Nukem vibes. <laughs> like like Duke Nukem the original vibes. Right. The side scrolling platformer. Yeah. Pistol. 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 <laughs> Pissed off. Pissed in my face. I see, said the blind man, peeing into the wind. It's all coming back to me now. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty go. sure I have this, uh, I, I have the remaster on, I think, Amazon Games? Uh, the remaster for Turok 2? Yeah, yeah. It's on Steam too. I think all of them are. Yeah. Well, I, I it's night I get dive. Games all the night dive from remasters. So many different. Uh, I get games for free from so many different sources that I always like lose track of what I have and don't have, unless I physically Oops. own something. Night dive keepers of our childhood. So one of them. <laughs> I mean, they do they do really fucking good work. We're playing the Quake yeah. remaster on uh, the other show, the other show at the moment, and it's Night Dive, and it's still it's very good. I uh, I still want to see you go through uh, Star Wars uh, Dark Forces eventually. Once a once it, the price comes down, and it will. Don't don't need yeah, to worry about was, that. Once it comes down, I will. It was it on comes... sale once already, but uh, you know, like thirty yeah. percent isn't much. Yeah, when it come, when it's on sale for like nine ninety nine, like the Quake remasters are, that's probably. I'm what I'm hoping it gets a physical release because I have uh, like through limited slugging. run games or something. Yeah, I've, I've got uh, uh, Jedi Knight two and uh, Jedi Knight uh, Jedi Academy physically from limited run, along with uh, Republic Commando. So uh, I'm missing a few of the Star Wars limited run games like. Uh, uh, freaking uh, oh god, what what the hell was it? The one with the apprentice, Force Unleashed, which is a really good one. I'm gonna, I'm having an issue with my uh, control. Oh no! I wonder if uh, not not like a uh, technical issue. It's just like I'm having problems with it. Um. Oh, that just changed it to control pad. I don't want that. Oh, even worse. <laughs> Arcade. Arcade's probably my style. Yeah. That's a little better. I think I can handle that better. All right. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, this is a decent game. I uh I I do uh I do like this. I don't it doesn't have the nostalgia for me that the first one had. That I feel the but, same way. Uh, I do feel the same. But at the same, same time way. like they did improve on it massively with this game. Yeah, I I I do get why this game gets a lot of praise. It is it is a good game. I'm not going to I'm not going to fault that. It is a good game. I just I just don't have the fondness for it that I do for the first Turok. Um, I mean, it's it's unfortunate that the lack of two sticks makes uh, the N64 games 
a lot harder to play. That's that's why I love Night Dive is because they 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 make them two, two sticks. That's why Quake is so much fun to me to play right now on the other shows because it's dual stick and it's. Well, I mean, honestly, it's I play it with keyboard anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But yeah, it, if you choose to play it with controller, you can play it dual, dual stick, like it's supposed so to. Be I've playing. been doing a lot of shooting lately in general because, like, I've been playing uh, both Tiny Tina's Wonderland. I thought you were Max Caster. Computer. Been doing a lot of shooting. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but his Twitter, his Twitter is a work of art. I do enjoy it. <laughs> um. Uh, but yeah, I uh, I've been playing a lot of Tiny Tina's Wonderlands on my computer, or despite how much it crashes on uh, on on Switch, the fact that it's portable on the Switch makes it so much enjoyable. Uh, Borderlands Three, because I've been playing through the DLC in that game. I never uh, played through it after I beat it because boy, that campaign is girthy. Whoops. <laughs> so Turok turned into OP. Three lives remaining. <laughs> Three lives remaining. The thing is, it's going to always say that because I have unlimited lives turned on. <laughs> yep, in game cheat menu. Not really an accoutrement if it's in the game. Yeah. Turok falls down a hole. De death sounds have always made me laugh in games. Just die, for fuck's sake. Nobody asked you to live... Ooh, teleport. Oh, shit. Jesus. Should not take that many bullets just to take him down. Where are you taking me? Warp. Warp. Oh. Mm, he's a big boy. No, he's just on a column. Oh. I can be a big boy, too. Whee! <laughs> oh, you can't uh, vault can't, up surfaces. Yeah, I can't jump up there. I'm just going to shoot him in the crotch repeatedly till he dies. <laughs> as bad as you don't shoot people in the crotch! <laughs> All right, fine. I'll shoot him up here. <laughs> oh, hamburgers! <laughs> Oh, this guy's pew pewing. Not for long. Now he's dead deading. <laughs> Excuse you. God, they're they're about as annoying as the freaking turkeys. I yeah. Oh my god. Oh my god! Just freaking die! Oh. What the hell Where's did that, that open? Ankle biting dog. Oh, there we go. It's this door. Now uh, they're hopping around. Yeah. You dead. There we go. Alright, up the slider. Pretty sure the switch is up here for that door. Bow that I don't need. There's the switch. Down we go. Good shit. Raptors.
That's unsettling. These noises. Jurassic Park. Be nice Park. to have more than just a uh, basic pistol. I didn't even have that for a bit. I only had the bow. So why? Well, won't hell, why not? You die. Let's do this. There. Oops. Now I have all weapons. Nice. Cerebral bore. Oh, let's do that. PFM layer? Yeah. Who wants some now? Oh, it's just for mines. Hey, I don't need that. Uh, rocket launcher. Jesus! <laughs> Okay, well, that certainly works. That certainly works. <laughs> Yeet! It just launches three of them at once. Holy crap. Flamethrower. Oh, that actually works pretty good. It's a Darby Allen simulator. Razor Wind. It's me after Taco Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Cuts the fuck out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's basically a Jesus. boomerang. That's pretty fucking cool. I like that. Yeah, I like that weapon. It's pretty damn awesome. Yeah, it is. It's freaking runs right through him. Boom. There was supposed to be an earth shattering kaboom. So it just reminds me of uh freaking uh Killface's son in Frisky Dingo. <laughs> Boom. Shotgun, oh, you can shredder. switch between the weak sauce version or the holy crap version. That would be the holy crap. Yeah, I get it. Yep. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. <laughs> okay. I'm loving it. Just the freaking rag dolling and. <laughs> that dude oh did my not God. stand a chance. There's one in the distance. Hold on. This one in the fog. Oh, the fog is protecting it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fucking solid. That that just reminds me of, like, if you're playing Borderlands, like, the, uh, the Handsome Collection on uh, Switch. After a while of killing people from a distance, the ragdoll starts screwing up, and, like... You just have corpses floating in midair after they've <laughs> bounced wildly. Corpses <laughs> bobbing in the sea. Ha 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 he he he. Uh, the cut song from Titanic. Uh, in any event, <laughs> thoughts on Turok 2, Jason? It's uh, more fun than Titanic the Musical. That's a low bar, because Titanic the Musical does not seem like it would be fun. <laughs> it just seems like it would be depressing. Far, wherever you are. Is that Sesame Street singing it? It's uh, the only song far. that people know. Yeah, Celine Dion. Know. <laughs> uh, but, like, yeah, no. Uh, it's a good game. It's a good game. I I, uh, I would play it with cheats, but uh, that's just me. That's how I know. played it, and it worked out yeah. very well for America so far. Uh, yeah, it's it's... Again, I don't finally remember it as well as I do the first one, but it's still a fun game. It's still good in its own right. Uh, the Game Boy Color version, obviously, is my favorite, but this will do in a pinch. Scores out of 10, Jason. Eight. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a nine, actually. One more game this episode to play. Yeah, Spin Jot Wheel. Two vetoes. Uh, yep, two vetoes. Okay. Big Mountain 2000. This is the one game from the year 2000 that was on the wheel. If we don't veto it. <laughs> I 
Uh, also known as Snow Speeder. Yes, it came out in 98 in Japan originally. It didn't yeah. come out here for two years after that. Holy crap. Yeah. Um, no, I'm, I'm sharing this. What is up with this box art? I do not remember this game at all, by the way. The game looks nothing at all like that box art. That is some 90s ass box art. <laughs> Which is funny because this game is not from the 90s. <laughs> well, no, it came out literally October 10th, 2000 yeah. in the United States. Um, well, I guess it's 90s, 90s. It's 90s in Japan. It was showcased at the Tokyo Game Show in 1997. <laughs> I gotta keep a look at this box art. <clears throat> oh yeah, that is definitely that's very nineties that box art. Alright. Like holy crap. Um I guess we're checking this out. You know, I looked I'm looking at a screenshot and I'm not impressed. This I mean, is not gonna be as fun as the other one, so I think I I think we're gonna veto it. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's no problem. We that can do is, that. That is some lousy freaking title screening too on top of it all. To the wheel. So we have two left now. Uh, I gotta. There we go. Spin it. There we go. Like, oh no, I forgot how to do things. I forgot how to life. <laughs> oh boy. A bug's life. <laughs> Screw it. This could be funny. <laughs> Hello, you're gonna die. <laughs> 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 oh, Disney Interactive. Activision. These are all recognizable names. Traveler's Tales. Oh, yeah. Extremely they're, recognizable. They're the Lego people. Yep. Maybe. It might be all right. Uh, definitely we'll start with some training, probably. Let me go to options, though, first. As I am always want to do. Oh, thank. good thing I saw that. Um, Oops. Huh. This actually got ported over to the PlayStation Store uh, for the PS1 version uh, and was purchasable, uh, purchasable for the PS3 and PSP. <sighs> Interesting. Um... Sony published it directly uh, in conjunction with uh, Disney Interactive. Fucking uh, aerial ass font. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I misread that as hello there, Filk. <laughs> <laughs> I've had my Filk of this game. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? There's still gold on the wheel. And a golden turd. This is twin stick. That's weird. Oh, that is weird. Then again, this did come out on the PlayStation 1. So. Oh, that's interesting. This probably would have been hell to play on the C pad, though. So I'm actually glad oh my I have two sticks. It says here console version was met with mixed or average reviews. Um. <laughs> PlayStation 55% average and 64 54% average. Game Boy Color 36% average. Um, GameSpot gave the game 2.7 out of 10. Uh, it was obvious that Disney was more interested in producing a $40 advertisement for its movie than developing a playable game. However, GameSpot gave the N64 version a 6 out of 10? What? IGN gave the N64 version 6.8 out of 10. Uh, and gave the PlayStation version a 4 out of 10. What the hell? What were these freaking reviewers on? Mm. Uh... Daniel Erickson reviewed the N64 version for Next Generation, rating it one star out of five, you were, saying, you were any so, way you slice it, this stinks. I was going to say, you were so incensed there for a second that you left. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, uh, that might have been a connection issue. Might have been. Yeah, because I've, I've been just reading these reviews and going like, wow, what the hell were these reviewers on back then that the N64 version, which overall got worse ratings because it scored less than the PlayStation version, still got better scores with some of these people. What the hell? It won the PC Children's Entertainment Title of the Year Award at the second annual Interactive Achievement Awards, competing against six other nominees. What were the other nominees for that? Jesus. Well, Game of the Year went to Ocarina of Time. Okay. Uh, Outstanding Achievement in Art and Graphics went to Banjo-Kazooie. Okay. Damn! It was... You know what? It was a stacked year that year. Okay, Game of the Year nominees that year for this uh, award show. Banjo-Kazooie, Grim Fandango, Half-Life, Metal Gear Solid, Sid Meier's Alpha Centauri, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, Ocarina of Time. Outstanding Achievement in Art and Graphics went to Banjo-Kazooie, beating out Grim Fandango, Half-Life, and Spyro. Uh, Interactive Design Award went to uh, Ocarina of Time, beating out Half-Life, Metal Gear Solid, Pokemon Red and Blue, and Alpha Centauri. Uh, Achievement in Sound and Music went to Road Rash 3D. Uh, Outstanding Achievement in Software Engineering, Ocarina of Time. Um... Okay, but this one's kind of funny. Okay. Outstanding achievement in character or story development. We got the X-Files game, Ocarina of Time, Sanitarium, Metal Gear Solid, King's Quest Mask of Eternity, Half-Life, Grim Fandango, and Pokemon Red and Blue. What do you think won for outstanding achievement in character or story? Ocarina? Pokemon Red and Blue. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like, that game has next to no story. Uh, console <laughs> Game of the Year went to Ocarina of Time. Action Game of the Year went to Banjo-Kazooie. Uh, Adventure Game of the Year, which is different from Action, went to Ocarina of Time. Console Fighting Game of the Year went to WCW NWO Revenge. Uh, Racing Game of the Year went to Gran Turismo. Uh Okay, um, role-playing game of the year somehow went to Ocarina of Time. It's not an RPG. Yeah, it's more an action game, but yeah. <laughs> like, it beat out Panzer Dragoon Saga, Pokemon Red and Blue, and Parasite Eve. Uh, sports game of the year? Uh, the nominees included Hotshot Golf, 1080 Snowboarding, Kobe Bryant, and NBA Courtside, NFL Blitz, and Quarter Black Club. Quarter Black Club. Quarterback Club, 1080 won that. Computer awards were different. Computer, Half-Life won Computer Title of the Year and Action Game of the Year. Grim Fandango won Adventure Game of the Year. Ooh, Baldur's Gate won Role-Playing Game of the Year. I see the more things change, the more they stay the same, <laughs> considering it won Game of the Year at the Game Awards. Um, Need for Speed 3, Alpha Centauri... FIFA 99. Okay. PC Children's Entertainment Title of the Year. A Bug's Life Beat Out. Barbie Riding Club. Blue's Birthday Adventure. Dr. Brain Thinking Games IQ Adventure. Lego Creator. Rugrats Adventure Game. And Starfire Soccer Challenge. Not, not much of a... Not much of a field for that. A Bug's Life beat out Barbie and Blue's Clues. Okay. Um, well, I guess, I guess so. <laughs> yeah. Kind of interesting looking at this and going, wow, look at like how much things have changed. Uh, online Family Board Game of the Year. Uh, multiplayer Jeopardy Online from Sony Online Entertainment on PC, I guess. Mm. Online Entertainment Site of the Year went to GameSpot.com, beating out MSN Gaming Zone, Uproar.com, and Comedy Central Online. 
Because they even gave awards to websites. It's, uh, looking at this, uh, Half-Life and Ocarina of Time get the most nominations out of all of them. Huh. That was an interesting rabbit hole. There's a there's an archived YouTube video of the award show. Wow. <laughs> Holy crap. Are you kidding me? Yeah, the Video Game History Foundation has it. 1999, the second annual Interactive Achievement Awards. Live from the Variety Arts Theater in Los Angeles, California. Held during E3 of 1999. This award show still exists, but now it is called the Dice Awards. Ah. Uh. Yep, the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences, a nonprofit organization. Interesting. This is very par for the course, uh, uh, generic platformer. Yeah. The draw distance really sucks on the N64. I'm I'm kind of amazed that they were able to fit this on a cartridge. This way, Flick. Yeah, over uh, here. He's, that's getting annoying. This way, Flick. This oh shoot! Way, it's flick. a wasp. This way, Flick. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Quick, kill the wasp before it can vote for Donald Trump. Oh. <laughs> I'm not wrong. That's what Donald Trump said after the trial. <laughs> I'm not wrong. I mean, You're I'm totally, wrong. I'm totally innocent. I wasn't just convicted on 34 counts. <laughs> and listen, this My show God. is bipartisan, by the way. I don't like Biden either. I think they're both, they both suck mud. Yeah, I hate them no both. Yeah, but... they're, they're, they're both shit. But, but one party is clearly eviler than the other. Yeah. Oh, there's there's a party that will revoke your rights and a party that, you know, is just, yeah, vote for us. We won't revoke your rights. <laughs> My God, that that ending level complete screen was just <laughs> pure very cringe. generic. Yeah, no, like he he was actively cringing. Uh, thoughts on a bug's life, Jace. We didn't get that long with it because we played Turok 2 for a while. but Painfully generic, but amazing that they fit the whole damn thing onto a cartridge because it had the quality of a PlayStation game with the exception of the music, which probably is like CD quality, you know, audio. Right. The fact that they got those sound effects and everything else in there, it's like, you know what? Traveler's Tales, you guys worked magic back in the day. It is sad that all you guys do now is Lego games. Nothing wrong with the Lego games. They are very fun games. Yep. But, I mean, come on. Like, freaking Sonic 3D Blast. Okay, well, Sonic 3D Blast wasn't that good. But it was still <laughs> pretty damn impressive for a Genesis title. Yes, absolutely. You know? yeah, that I do agree and, with, for sure. Or uh, I think uh, they also did Mickey Mania as well. Yes. Uh, which, which, again, on a cartridge, that was pretty fucking impressive. So they are wizards of programming or at least they were back in the day and now all they do is just you know lego game number 11 billion and 52 you know yeah other than that this is like a throwaway game <laughs> yeah it is basically a throwaway game i mean it it plays fine it, it looks all right it's just saddled unnecessarily with a disney license i feel it's just like eh, it's trying too hard to be to be something it's not <laughs> Um, I mean, uh, it, it, it could be worse. They could have made Ants the game. Yeah, I think they did make Ants the game. I don't think they made it, but I think there is an Ants game. Um, but in any event, yeah, this is so painfully generic, It's it, it hurts. Scores out of 10, There was Jason. a Game Boy Color one, yeah. <laughs> Scores out of 10. In, uh, four. Yeah, four. Uh, on this edition of the show... We played Virtual Pool 64, Turok 2, and A Bug's Life. Best game of the episode, Jason? Uh, Turok. 
Yeah, I'm going to go with Turok as well. Thanks for joining us for this edition of Backseat Gamer, of Retro Roulette, rather. If you like what we do, please hit subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell to be notified of upcoming videos. For Jason Amherst, I'm Michael Riley saying see you next time.